The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Broadcasting live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage in Salem, New Hampshire, USA. And broadcasting around the world, this is the Cigar Authority. Transmitting since 2010, the Cigar Authority is the longest lasting cigar podcast ever. Grab a cigar and light them up, light them up, light them up. This is the Cigar Authority. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. October 28th, 2023. How do you start a cigar brand? It's not just money. There are lots of steps. We're going to get through them today. Welcome, everybody, to The Cigar Authority. And you are listening to The Cigar Authority, now in its 14th year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. And you catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. Okay, gang's all here. Beautiful day outside. We were expecting no studio audience today except for Pam because she, <laughs> because she has that cool thing. The thing. What's it? Slingshot? Slingshot. She's got a slingshot. And said, oh, today's Not the, the day. kind to shoot marbles, no, the, but when the, the kind drive. to ride. Yeah. yeah. So uh, she was going to show up was Ed Sullivan's guess, and he nailed it. But we got, we got a studio audience. I'm surprised. It's great. Here we are in New England. It is the end of October, and it may hit 80 degrees today. Global warming. Bring it on. Yeah, it says it's 75 right now. All right. It's beautiful. All right. We have the first cigar to smoke today. Uh, kind of get into winter cigars and, you know, shorter things because it's usually cold, but mm. not the case. Well, today... Well, Dave, today's first cigar is <laughs> well, the Dave. Nub 358 Habano. It's manufactured in Nicaragua by Oliva Cigars. The size we're smoking is 3.75 by 58 ring uh. gauge. Oh, Why sorry. Did I make a noise? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, did the, you got a problem with three and uh, three quarter inches? No, no. no I'm good with that. Yeah, it's <laughs> very <Okay>. familiar. <laughs> uh this is a Nicaraguan Puro, meaning the uh, wrapper, which is a Nicaraguan Habano wrapper, uh, obviously grown in Nicaragua, but the binder and filler are also grown in Nicaragua. It is part of the Cigar Authority care package. A single is going to set you back eight sixty nine, and a box of twenty four is one seventy four ninety nine, dropping the single price down to just seven twenty nine per <laughs> cigar on twoguyscigars.com. dot com. If you are too far away from a brick and mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. dot com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. Huh? I, I think... It's the middle finger almost. Almost. A little longer, but you got the right ring gauge on that finger. Yeah. Well, no. The middle. The <laughs> middle of the finger. As the it goes down is, to the base. Is the more, like a, yeah. more like a 72 so down Dave, there. Dave has perfecto fingers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They kind of taper. Yeah. So, a lot, lot to be said about this cigar, and I'll get into that in a second, but let's give it a cut and light, and let's get to it. This is the Habano. Sometimes these things had numbers equated to them also, but I don't see it Typically on the Typically, those numbers are in the corner of the box. They'll okay. be uh, 34, um, 47, and it's the number of, inch, the number of minutes. minutes it'll burn till it hits the band. Huh. Did you know that? I you, think I did at yeah, one time. It's just on the box and stuff, and I've tested it. It's pretty accurate. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, it's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand. While all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Our studio audience is so proud of themselves when they cut <laughs> along with us. I yes. mean, they're like, they're like little kids on Christmas. I they, love that. It even happened at the expo. It did. Mm. Yeah. It did. A big crowd. Yeah. A lot of clicking. Yeah, very good, very good. And it, it just happened by itself. Mm -hmm. there, there was no, nobody ever told anybody to do anything. It just happens. Even though there's somebody in the audience sometimes, and she's not here today, that purposely does not cut. Right, it's a protest. We have a name for women like that, but we're not allowed to say it on the show. Yeah. Hmm. She's listening. <laughs> she's not cutting along, but she's listening. 
I'll get a text from her later. Well, a little I, barnyard. I am cutting a little more because mm. it's a little tight, and I have my own cutter, so I can do that. I can cut a little more because I have my own cutter. If you're using somebody else's cutter, you've got to suck it up, and then you can't do it. You can't put it in your mouth and then use the cutter again. No. But it's my cutter. No one uses this but me. Jonathan, you get any a little more. raw almonds on that? I could go raw almonds. It, it, it's dead. More, I'm getting more barnyard than, than anything mm-hmm. else, but if you if you said, yeah, almonds in the raw, like, the outside, that little tannic bit like on the skin. A, a raw almond in a cow pie. That's where all the lectins <laughs> are in the, in the skin. I hit my head last night so friggin' hard that I tasted concussion. Yes. Oh. I've been there. Oh. It's metallic taste. Right to my knees. I walked right into a, an Eves in a garage, just straight in. Boom. You want to take your hat off and show everybody no, your boo-boo? No, I had a big friggin' <laughs> big hematoma boo-boo. up here. Yeah. It sucks. Oh, no. We're going to light our cigar today with the Gator by Vertigo. It's not mm-hmm. named after it. No, Gator. it's not, not to be confused with any broke-ass hoes out there. <laughs> He's this not even is, doing the show anymore. He's, he's not even on the show. They probably didn't pay much. Are you done? Nick and Gator? You yeah. Don't, you, you don't hear Gator anymore. I think he's gone. It's well, not, not I guess this will be the last time that he'll be talked about. Okay. What, what May he did, rest in peace. What did you, you never heard him except for the crumbling cellophane, right? Right. No, it was he my was, favorite <laughs> contribution that he had to the show. <laughs> The Gator by Vertigo features a push button and a single jet fueled by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. On the side, you've got a pop-out bullet punch. At the bottom, easy adjustment, and on the back, a fuel window, all for the low price of $19.99. That is the Gator by Vertigo. Dave, it's like he does it on purpose. The bigger the ring gauge, he gives you a, a single jet. Yeah. Well, I got I to gotta say it right up front. Uh, I hate to say it, but I have to say it. The drawer is very tight. I cut it twice. I'm, I'm going to suck it up, but hopefully it'll loosen up a bit, but it's very tight. It's mm. very tight. You don't see that as often in a ring gauge of this right. size, a tight draw. Yeah. It's weird that it happened, but it happened. It's a handmade product. These things happen, but... Maybe somebody fat-fingered it. Yeah. Can you feel where the knot is and you kind of work it a little loose? I think it's where, where I'm biting, where... Oh. Oh, boy. That's troublesome. Yeah. <laughs> Tragic. Troublesome way to start the show. It is. It is. But uh, the Nub 358 Habano is what we're smoking. Um, I thought a perfect cigar for what we're talking about today, which is uh, starting a cigar brand. And you live and learn. When I, when I see the popularity of the Nub, I live and learn because it was in my hands. I owned this brand. Mm. I had it, and I didn't know what to do with it. And I don't look at it as, as lost. It was a major lesson that ended up happening because I've done things since then because of the success of this and said, I had it, mm. and I gave it away, basically. Uh, um, Lauren James points out, you own the store. Get another one. What does that mean? Your cigar. Yeah, it's yeah. too tight. Yeah. I mean... Let's see how well. Uh, let's see how well Michael Blanco or uh, Trevor, are, if they're paying, if they're paying attention, yeah, and uh, bring Dave another uh, nub, Habano, Habano three five eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're listening. Okay, but uh, listen, I, I'm, I've been here before, but um, just to, you know, the people that are watching, maybe they're seeing that like my cheeks are going in when I'm, <laughs> when I'm sucking because it, it's really tight. Yeah, how's that golf ball? Yeah. Um, When you go to build a brand, or you start a brand, or you start a project, how long do you go before you say, this ain't working? No, you committed at the beginning. If you're going to do this, you're going to do this. When it came to this, I thought this was a really good idea. I test marketed within the store. I liked it. People were intrigued by it. I had them at the register, and here's these little short little fat... Um, fat boys? I think they were fat, fat boys. Fat boys. And maybe I can do something with this. But then somebody, um, which was um, 
Jose Oliva. Jose Oliva comes in to the office, sees them, says, what is with that? I explain it to him. He wants to smoke one. He does smoke one. He takes another one with him. And later on, uh, I get a call from him and says, if you're going to um, come down to Miami in January, I said, yes, I am. I tell him when. And he says, okay, can we have dinner? And we had dinner, and he said, um, a national sales meeting is tomorrow uh, based on our meeting here today. And what are you talking about? And then he shows me the finished product of Nub um, that he started producing after he left the store that yep. day because he thought it was a great Way idea. Way cooler name than your name. Yes. And uh, how he's going to launch it. He, so I was there on the ground floor of he explained to me, we're going to get this trailer. And we're going to wrap the trailer up. And we're going to get a car. And we're going to wrap the car up. And we're mm-hmm. going to get this guy. And he's going to drive around the country. And he's going to roll the cigars. And he's going to go from place to place. And the cigar is going to have a number on it, how, how long it takes to smoke. And at that time, I, I, I think there might have been two wrappers only, like a natural and a Maduro type of thing. And since then, lots of, lots of different ones. And um, this is what I want to do. What do you want for this idea? The answer was nothing. Um, give me a deal. Launch it with me. And good luck to you. Um, because to myself, this is a fad. Yeah, people are going to buy it. It's like you just smoked a 100 ring gauge cigar, right? Right. Listen, they better not get in the business of making 100 ring gauge cigars because it's going to, it sold. We did very well. We sold 100 of those things. It was annoyingly delicious. Yeah. But after three hours, I'm like, all right, I've had enough. Yes. Yeah. Um, with this, I said, it's going to have its little play. It's going to do something and it's going to go away. That was friggin' almost 20 years ago. That yeah. this thing is still going. There's no flash in the pan. And I, the, the answer was I didn't know what to do with it. And the answer to do with it was you got to give it your all. Mm-hmm. I mean, two vehicles were bought. Um, a person was hired just to end up handling this, go across the country at the trade show. There it was, big and bold. And they went out. They to, invested a oh, lot yeah. in it. Yeah. And boom, it ended up working. Somebody like me would have made... You know, maybe one size, which is what I did. One size of it. That was. I mean, how many sizes can you you make when you're talking about a f- four inches and under and a big ring gauge? How many uh, sizes are you gonna make? One out a lot of sizes. Yes. Yes. And the, a lot the, of wrappers. Most sizes they had at one time was it was five or six. To, to me, I could only see one size, and mm-hmm. I can only see one wrapper or whatever. Well, I mean, you're looking at only the one finger that you modeled it after. Mm. <laughs> so. Um, I didn't know what to do with it, and to this day, I hear other people say that all the time of something that they had in their mind. Uh, maybe they produced a little bit to see how it would be. Maybe they didn't. It's just in their mind, and then the thing comes out, and they say, I had that idea. That was my idea. I just didn't do it. Well, you have to actually do it, to, and I didn't do it. I produced the thing to a small degree just to test it, and then didn't do what needs to be done to launch a brand, to start a brand. So we'll get into that. But first, it's time for the question of the week today, and that's brought to you by Victor Sinclair Cigars. And the following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. And Nick writes, with respect to the strength of a cigar, Gentlemen, in terms of cigar strength, I'm curious if past tobacco use, such as cigarette smoking or chewing tobacco, has an effect on perceived nicotine strength of the cigar. I was a chew user for years. When I quit, uh, and when I quit, started to really get into cigars, but whenever I hear the strength ratings on cigars, I don't experience the same level of strength. Even on a strong cigar like Aladino Corojo Reserve Robusto, I don't get much nicotine strength. Plenty of strong flavor. All I can think is I'm either making the mistake of body versus strength, or my tolerance for nicotine is much higher due yeah, to my past tobacco history. Mm-hmm. Would love to get your Not, thoughts. Nothing's going to be ever strong for you. <laughs> no. Because your nicotine level was so, so high where this is three nicotine. Yeah. You know, 3% nicotine. Very, very small. Uh, and, I have seen, and somebody in the cigar industry that smokes a cigar with me, big shot with the company, puts a cigar down and then pops a pouch in mm. to get his nicotine. 
Hmm. Yeah, we've seen reps with cigarettes yeah. do the same thing. They yeah. smoke a cigar with you, and then they got to rip a butt real yeah. quick. Yeah, so you're not getting that out of this. It's a, cigars are a whole different thing. You're not smoking them for nicotine, and if you are, you're never going to get which, what you're looking for, so go back to your nicotine. Get a patch or chew yeah. some nicotine yeah, gum. Yeah, but it's not there. All right, how to start a cigar brand. Starting a cigar brand is complicated, very complicated, uh, but it's certainly possible for those who are smart in business, passionate about cigars, and willing to put the necessary time a lot of time, effort, and money into it. And we're not going to get into money. We did a whole show last year. Um, if you remember, we had Mickey Pegg on, and we were going to tell what it cost to make Our very government. first hostile witness. Yes. <laughs> he told us nothing. Later on, I got a phone call from Steve Sacker that said, I would like to do a redo on that show you just did. And he came up last he year. He came with everything. And he told it all. So you go back to that. That was January of last year. Go back to that show when you want to hear dollars and cents down to the penny of what things cost. Yep. Uh, if that ain't enough to scare you, let's move on. So here are the steps to consider when starting a cigar brand. We're talking starting a cigar brand, not owning a factory, not owning farms, not owning tobacco. You're going to a cigar manufacturer to manufacture cigars, and you say, I want to make a cigar brand. Basically private labeling it, but you're going to pick a blend, and you're going to come up with what you want. Number one, talk to the old timers who did it before and ask them to talk you out of it. Um, <laughs> if that doesn't work... Uh, you begin the process, uh, and it seems I'm a broken record when it comes to this of talking Listen, a lot of the, it. I know the I know the back end of this, and I've been doing the show now. We're in our 14th year. Why haven't I come up with a brand? Right, I, I have plenty of opportunity. Yeah, why am I not doing it? Yeah, it's insane. It ain't worth it. Yeah, it's insane. So research and planning. Funding, as I said, uh, is necessary to uh, cover the cap capital cost of production, marketing, operation, expense. Consider potential sources to continue funding because, as we were saying, Ed Sullivan, um, we see a lot of cigar brands having a tough time right now. Mm -hmm. They're having a tough time because we had a little boom that ended up happening. Cigar brands and also stores. Yeah. When it comes to the brand, what happened is it did get successful because stores were looking to buy cigars. When that ends up happening, you're not in a good place. You're actually in a bad place because now you have to reinvest more than that to get more product that comes in. You're waiting for revenue to come in. You can't wait till you run out of cigars. Now you have the money and then do it. You have to see well in advance, okay, start the next production. Oh, double that what I did yeah. last time. Double that means and twice as much money. You don't have you, any. If you were the factory's biggest account for private label, it's a three-month turnaround. Yeah. If you're not their biggest account, six, nine, 12 months. Yeah. So, you know, you, you had a great trade show yeah. that you launched it at the trade show. Oh, my God, this thing really went went crazy. You Let's start production. It. Yeah. <laughs> and there's so much outside your control. Even if you have the money and you say, okay, now make twice as many. If the general market goes to shit in the meantime, yeah, right. now you're stuck with all that product. That's what happened. Yeah. So the well, boom, because the boom we, was we over. We couldn't get cigars, so <clears throat> you end up ordering cigars from a guy you may not have ordered from before, and now well, and we're, we're and flush the, on everything else. And the customer who his brand wasn't there said, you don't have any of this? How's this one? Well, that's good, too. Okay, I'll get these today. Yeah. And that's what he means today, because tomorrow he's going back to his when his brand comes yeah. back in, because you didn't market this thing. This, this guy's giving it a shot. And you know what? That guy was pretty good. I'll grab one now, yeah. but give me a box of the regular stuff I ended up smoking. Well, you know, you were selling 20. Now you sold one times. How many times is this happening in stores? Yeah. So this, Listen, this, when, this when shit When there's is, a boom, if you've got somebody making a cigar for you, <clears throat> you're not their top priority. They're going to make their own stuff first. Right, right. Um, so, you know, you need your upfront capital. Then you need the, the capital immediately following that capital, which is $100,000 anyway. Mm -hmm. So let's just say it's $100,000 that you're going to need, and there's where you're going to go for your line of credit, maybe, uh, to say if and when this thing takes off. If you ever watch Shark Tank, these people already have an existing business. It's already yeah. running, and they usually say it's going, going good. We did a million dollars last year. We 
we expect $4 million this year. But you need capital to expand. Why are you here? Yeah. You're here because I, I don't have the $4 million. <laughs> I got orders for $4 million. Sometimes they have purchase orders and say I have a purchase order, but I can't fulfill it. Mm -hmm. I got people who want to buy my product, but I actually can't pay for it. So get a deep understanding of the cigar industry, including the history of different types of cigars in the market. Uh, there's never a good time to get in the cigar business, and today is no different. You have a broken no, record on yeah. that one. <laughs> Identify the niche in the marketplace. In the case of Nub that was smoking, there is a niche, right? There is a guy looking for a short, fat cigar, and sometimes, oh, I don't have time to smoke uh, a big cigar, so let me get this. By the way, this cigar takes whatever minutes it says on it, which is yeah. interesting. And maybe that's why they stop promoting it that way, because they may lose the customer looking for a short cigar because they only have a little time by mm -hmm. saying this takes an hour and 12 minutes. Um, so there's not a, the attention that it had once on there that they would actually talk about it. You don't hear it anymore. <clears throat> so I, identify your niche. Um, and... I recommend to you that, you know, when you're planning one, you, you're actually looking for who the customer's going to be. And if you say, I want to sell to Romeo and Juliet customers because they sell 20 million cigars a year, you, that's not a niche. You go, <laughs> you're going for the masses. That's not a teat you want to suckle on. But the mentality becomes, oh, if I can only get 1% of that business, I'll be loaded. Right. It's very, very hard. Yeah. Because every big company has somebody going against the and biggest they're, one. They're, they're a marketing machine. Yes, yes. So who is your ideal customer of the cigar that you have in your mind? Uh, oh, I'm going to get a really full-bodied, um, short-profile cigar, thin ring gauge. That's a niche, right? Okay, let me go with that. Um, that will be unique to the industry because there's not a lot of that. Do you know why there's not a lot of that? It doesn't people sell. People aren't buying them. Because people don't buy it, right? No, Ed Sullivan does buy those. So yeah. if you could get Ed Sullivan on your brand. Yeah, I can maintain you got, a brand. You've got a box a week. You cannot maintain a brand. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're a heavy user, but not heavy enough yeah. to maintain a brand. Um, why should someone buy your brand and the thousands of other options that are out there? So you, you're considering this brand. Oh, I got a great name for a cigar or something. Maybe they're going to buy the cigar once because of the cute name that's going to end up happening there. But really, how can this sustain itself? What's different than your cigar? Can, you, can we talk about the name, too? Because you, you kind of skipped over the very first thing that I think you should do when you have your name. We're not there yet. All right. Research and identify your competition and understand what sets your brand apart, what is going to set this brand apart. And if the answer is nothing. Uh, You've got to well, have a really good story. And it doesn't matter what the story is about. It needs to be a really good story to be able to get somebody hooked and in on that first It doesn't buy. matter if it's a true story? Most of it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, regulatory compliance. Understand and comply with all federal, state, and local taxes, uh, or else you're going to jail. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if, if you think you've cracked the code on the taxation thing. Yeah, you're the guy that's going to get yeah. away with it. Um, Related to manufacturing, distribution, and sale of tobacco products. Yes, you need licensing to, to operate a company. Mm -hmm. Obtain the necessary permits and licensing. Uh, brand developments. Create a brand identity, including the name. There's the part you want to do. So it happens at every trade show. Here's the new brand owners, and here's the name of their cigar, and here it is on aisle four, and it's also on aisle six and three. Somebody else owns that brand, and now you've printed everything. Yeah, two people have to start from scratch. Right. And you can throw away all the uh, POS, all the uh, things you printed, your price sheet, you name it, you, and you can actually go home if you came with one, and that's it. USPTO, US Patent and Trademark Organization, or whatever it is, USPTO. Office, maybe. Office. Um, it's a website, and you go on there, and it has a little search thing, and it's free, and you put the name in, and it pops up, and you see all the people that use that product, that name, and you look under what cigars are, or 
if some, let's say Disney had, had the name of something, you want to use uh, Cinderella as a cigar, you're going to have a problem because they trademarked it on everything. Right. So you're not able to. But maybe somebody just did it on tomato sauce. And you say, okay, mm-hmm. tomato sauce has nothing to do with uh, tobacco. Except and, uh, they're nightshades. Okay. Well, so we have a problem. <laughs> and both lectins and you can't have them, right? Um. Or you came up with a great-looking logo, Mm. and that could be a problem. So even though the word is different, the logo is the same same as... But but why can't I use a swoosh? Right, (laughs) because you're going to have a problem with that, too. So all this stuff has to be done in time. Then you're talking about packaging design, how many cigars go in the box. Is it going to be 10 over 10? Is it going to be... 858, is it going to be 5555 or 25s, or are you going to do a box of 10? Oh, I'll do a box of 10 because I can sell more boxes of 10. Well, that means more your boxes. Your price is higher. Yes, more boxes divided by the $10 yeah. cost of your box. It's a dollar per cigar just going for the box, if that's how you're figuring it too. The, 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 that is going to determine part of the determination of what this thing is going to ultimately sell for. Yeah. Some people are going to go in with the thing of, okay, I want to make a cigar under $10 because that's what's needed in this industry. Yeah, once you do the math, though, we were doing some this yeah. week. Oh, it's difficult. Yes. Well, and that's probably why so many expensive cigars came out this year at the trade show because if you're going to sell fewer units, you may as well make it. And margin. I understand that when it's somebody new getting in there, but I saw it with a lot of old established brands and saying, okay, they're coming in at $20 or whatever. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if there's any success ones out there. We'll see uh, as time goes on. But um, unfortunately, well, the costs are up, and they're saying, I'll get my money back faster, but then you, you sell less. and it's- JFR Lunatic 10x100 is a prime example. That is, they went after two markets. They went after guys that smoke big ring gauges and are looking for a great value, and they also went after the gimmick market. Came out just in time for Halloween. Yeah. How many of those were purchased so that somebody Part had... Part of a costume. Exactly. A cigar for their costume. Yeah. So good timing on that. It is. Timing is everything, but that's too. But that's the story I was talking about before. What's the reason why you came out with this cigar? You know how many brands are coming out in November? Too many. Oh, my God. This is the dead time. Yeah. Now it has slowed down uh, Unless you can tie your cigar with Thanksgiving specifically. Does it taste like toasted turkey skin? There we go. I mean... A- it's a tough time for a lot of retailers. They're not going to be buying at this time of year. Right, right. Design the packaging and labeling to meet the regulatory requirements, including health warnings and product information. Oh, FDA said we don't have to have health warnings in the United States. Mm-hmm. If there's another place in the United States off the West Coast called California who says differently that you have to have a warning label on there if you're going to sell them to the state of California. So there has to be a warning label there. And you've got to print the labels anyway, so you're printing the labels, yeah. and they're all going you on know, the box. Beer and beards. Uh, beer, uh, beer and beards. Beer and beer. Yeah, beer, that, drinking beer and beards. Yeah, that's a tough one yeah. to get out. It's a tongue twister. He thinks maybe a Thanksgiving stuffing-infused cigar. There we go. How about the, uh, what's the thing all the people are doing this time of year with the... Um, Deep frying? No. Flavored coffee and it's all, you know... Oh, all pumpkin spice. Pumpkin spice, uh, all this shit. It's too much. I haven't seen another cigar yet. I don't think I have either. I'm yeah. shocked. Yeah. Pumpkin spice cigar. That would probably do well for the fall. Right. It would probably do well. But then you got lots of regulatory issues with um, the trying to stamp out the flavored thing mm-hmm. again. I don't think you'd be able to call it pumpkin spice. You'd have to have some other... Why? The food, it, the fact that it has a food name is it, is the the big problem. No, it's FDA said nothing. I mean, it, they're going to come down on them, but they haven't done it yet. Right. Hmm. Um, size and style. So, you know, as I said, I was going to do nub, and if I did nub, I was going to come up with one size. So after nub was successful, I came up with firecracker, and I came up with one size, one wrapper, that's it. And then said, okay, let me come with a limited release every year. So there's a second one, but that limited release sells out in a day or so. So really, 
364 days a year, I only have one size of one thing. Later came the black bomb this year that now it has two, and maybe down the road we can start messing with wrappers, but I did it wrong. Uh, I did it wrong that there's only one that has no visibility on the shelf, so now there's two. If I can get one more on there and stuff, maybe we can see it, plus the limited release, and now we have a brand. But before, I didn't have a brand. When I had uh, Nub before it was Nub, I didn't have a brand either. They made sure there was a brand. So live and learn, as much as it, it pains me that this is as successful as it is, and I, I had it and I, I, I blew it, I'm learning from it Dave, many years later. Ryan Seneca says uh, Tatiana makes a pumpkin spice cigar oh, really? okay. called Harvest Moon. All right. Okay. I don't need to try that no? one. No? Eh. I don't really like the it. pumpkin spice thing. No. Not a fan. No, I'm not a fan of it either, but it's popular. And you got to be a fan of your cigar brand that you do, not necessarily. No. Uh, well, you don't, you don't want to get that uh, Stockholm cigar brand syndrome where you only smoke your stuff and your stuff is the only thing you're enamored with. You know, it really doesn't exist. People, I know manufacturers <laughs> say they only smoke their own stuff, but they don't. Uh, they, not if they want to keep being successful. Right. You need to know what other people yeah. are doing. Size and styles. Uh I'd say you need four sizes to start off with, and at least, obviously, one wrapper at the, at the very least. So you come I, out with four, I choose think better. You, you could cut it to three. Yeah? Yeah. You who, need, who did that? Somebody did that. Was that um, um, uh, West Tampa? West Tampa, three sizes. Yeah, they, yeah. they just went Robusto, Toro, and Gordo. The three, the three biggest sellers. Yep. Because Churchill really only moves in the summertime. Yeah. That's not a all year round well, in New England. in New England. So depending on your niche, you need a small cigar, a large cigar, a thick cigar, a thin cigar. Mm. It's as simple as we can possibly make this, right? What, what do you want? You want to be able to go to the masses. You're making a full-bodied cigar. Well, make one of them thick, one of them thin, one of them long, one of them short, at the very least, now you got something for everybody because if you only made a strong cigar and it only came in a big ring gauge, oh, now you're, you're taking your, your niche and niching that even down even more. Very odd uh, in the case of McAuliffe, only two sizes, McAuliffe Black. Yeah, they need more. All their other stuff, they have at least three sometimes. No, sometimes Some one. Them. That was very odd. That whole thing was odd. They're going to clean that up. I bet you anything. I would expect another size of McAuliffe Black next year. They got a winner. Now add a couple of sizes to it. At least one. Bruce, so it's visible. Bruce Andex says no Lanceros. No Lanceros. <laughs> no. Don't even Ever. do it. No. <laughs> no. I mean, how you, fat do you want your fingers to look if, every if, day? If you wanted to do it when you're really, really established for a long time, put a limited release yeah. one that's out just, there. Davidoff just put it out again, right? Yeah. So here's our limited release. We're only making a thousand boxes, and they're going to sell it in one day, and it's going to be over, and that's it. If they didn't do it that way, it, it it existed before. It didn't sell at all, right? You did it this way, and you were able to sell it. So live and, live and learn, right? Again, we're talking to a new cigar manufacturer who has not lived and learned, uh, so we're trying to help you here. Leave it to the girl. Uh. Product development. Uh, don't start by sourcing tobacco. Uh, use what they have on hand and continue to get and decide on a blend based on that information because if you do it the other way around, talk about you know, asking for trouble, all of a sudden they're missing one ingredient. They can't even right. make your cigar. They got a source that it's not ready. That's not a way to start the business. But uh, we, we know somebody. We know who somebody did that it did. Though, but he also had a shit ton of tobacco knowledge. Yes. And knew how to buy yeah. tobacco. And he had a shit ton of money. Yeah. So you, you, you're asking for trouble, though, uh, going that way. Uh, work with experienced cigar makers or manufacturers to produce your cigar. This involves. Involves even creating your own blend or private labeling that already exists. Just so you know, it's another thing. You can create your own brand with a manufacturer, or you can take something they already make, and you can say, I want that. Or you can say something that they already make and say, I love that cigar, but make them in these sizes. 
So they're going to use the same exact tobacco and the same thing, but different sizes that don't exist from that other brand that's there. And then that's even more confusion to the public than they even realize it. So you got all those options. And honestly, I've done all of those options myself. Uh, and, um, you know, if you're selling to a store, they don't happen to carry that other brand anyway. But sometimes it's right next to the other brand. They're both the same thing. So it may involve... Uh, creating the private label that already exists. Test and refine your cigars to ensure consistency and quality. That's something you see all the time here. We mm -hmm. have lots of our own brands. So the brand comes in, there's a new thing of it, the box is ripped open immediately, and the cigar is, is tasted from there to know right early before any distribution happens to that brand, uh, before it shows up on shelves or anything. Mm -hmm. It has to be tested like it's day one again to make sure. They're supposedly doing it, but you got to double check. And... It's happened a few times that yeah. all of it's getting sent back. <laughs> or you crack open that first box and it's supposed to be Connecticut and it's Maduro. Yes. All <laughs> these things that the, happen. It's not the right thing. Then you got to consider distribution and sales. Uh, determine your distribution channels, which would include selling uh, directly to retailers. You are going to sell to the retailer. Or, and in some cases, some people sell directly to the end user. A manufacturer, a, a brand owner, can have a brand made for them. They set up their own website, and they sell that cigar just to people themselves, and that's it. And you're everything. At that point, you're actually being able to sell that at a better price because there's not another layer inside there. So if you were looking for that under $10 cigar and you say, there's no way I can get to that under $10 cigar, it's your first time out. Yeah. If you take a lot of the packaging out of it. You yeah. Know, and yeah, sell it on your own website as and you know bundles what? or yeah. five packs. And not a bad way to test something to see if, is this viable? Do people mm -hmm. like this? Is this going to work? And I'll give you a, a, for instance, it's out there, a cigar that you smoke all the time, Ed Sullivan, started direct to consumer to see if it worked out. And it was Neanderthal, right? Mm -hmm. That cigar was out there, direct to them. Then they said, okay, we have a winner. People like this. We're going to stop selling it direct. And now we're going to. Because you open can't it. compete with the stores that you're selling Correct. it to. Correct. People have tried that, too, and That's failed. A no -no. That becomes a no-no, too. So there's, there's some how to start a cigar brand, part one. And um, I have a new uh, nub over here. Thank you. It may have a little damage because uh, somebody threw it like a girl. Uh, there was a, a little more <laughs> mustard on it than it needed. All right. I'm going to light it up during the break, but uh, we're going to go to break. When we come back, how do you start a cigar brand? It's not just money. There's lots of steps. I got more of them when we come back. We're live in the Toscano soundstage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Romeo y Julieta Reserva Real Nicaragua, the Nicaraguan expression of America's beloved brand, Reserva Real. Reserva Real Nicaragua is a Nicaraguan puro, meticulously blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. The Reserva Real Nicaragua will take Romeo lovers and Romeo novices alike on a journey through premium Nicaraguan tobaccos. Reserva Real Nicaragua. It'll steal your heart again. Surgeon General warning, cigar smoking can cause lung cancer and heart disease. Cigar in the shop called Elberton, Elberton, Elberton. There's a cigar in the shop called Elberton. Cut and light one now. Elberton cigars are handmade premium cigars from Nicaragua, created by the J.C. Newman Cigar Company. Expect a smooth, hearty smoke with a little spice and a great value. There's a cigar in the shop called Elberton, Elberton, Elberton. There's a cigar in the shop called Elberton, cut and light one now. In a world where the open road calls to the adventures, 
there is a cigar that pays tribute to a journey of resilience and determination. Introducing the Christoph Guardrail Cigar, a testament to the indomitable spirit of its founder, Glenn Case. The Guardrails blend takes you on a captivating journey through the world's finest tobacco regions. Brazilian Maduro, Dominican Binder, and a unique touch of Zimbabwe. This medium to full-bodied cigar offers a variety of flavors that will delight your senses. With notes of caramel, the smoothness of French roast coffee, and the allure of dry cocoa, the Guardrails complexity is unmatched. Whether you're celebrating life's victories or savoring moments of camaraderie, the Christoph Guardrail Cigar brings people together with its unforgettable flavor and creamy finish. Take your taste buds on a ride they won't forget. Experience the Christoph Guardrail Cigar today. Christoph Cigars, take them for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy, the Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. Sono Michael Cappellini dal Toscano Cigars. Stai ascoltando al Cigar Authority sul United Podcast Network. Benvenuti a tutti voi. And we are back, powered by the West Tampa Tobacco Company, featuring West Tampa Black, White, and Red. West Tampa Cigars is passion with a purpose. Three sizes on West Tampa, that's it. Yeah. And three different kinds. So the whole portfolio is nine. So a retailer should carry all nine, right? You get the whole thing. Sure. Easy. It's yeah. certainly easy to find on the shelves, and they sell well. That's good. So uh, that's what we're talking about, is starting a cigar brand from scratch. You don't have a cigar you, uh, Which, under your name. you saying, I think I want to get in the business and be a brand owner. We're not talking about having your own factory and farming your tobacco or anything like that. Just a brand owner, which, by the way, most people are. There's many, not many people that do it all. Right. Um, you got to look at Rick Rodriguez, too, because... His brand is successful. I mean, it seems like right out of the gate. It normally takes 10 years to be at the level that it appears that he's at now. Well, it took him 20-something years. (laughs) To learn all the the tricks. Which is a great thing to be in the business first and really get to know it and stuff. And, uh, you know, I remember when he announced he was retiring and I go, wow, this guy was really into it. I'm very, very surprised he retired. But he retired on a Thursday, and he started opened his company up on Friday. <laughs> so, boom, here it was. And I said, oh, okay, because it didn't make any sense um, that, he, that he was gone yeah. and uh, successful. As Steve Sock is successful because he was in the business already and knew what to do. Nick, Nick Bellillo, you know, and these people that come, come in. So it's unfair to mention them as new guys that came in. But when you look at really somebody new knew that came in and all of a sudden they start a brand um, more losers than winners by far not even close because it's not easy and you got to go by these steps develop a sales and marketing strategy to promote your brand including a website social media presence and marketing material this is before you even have your brand come out you better be ready with all these things it's not like okay I put the brand out then I'm going to start coming out with uh, a website. Then I'm going to come out with this. No, it has to all happen at once. Boom. Hey, welcome to Brand X. Here is the website. Here is the marketing material. Here is this. As, as all of those three that we mentioned did, right? Yep. Price. Where does it fit? Um, so the look of the packaging and the look of the cigar has to match 
the price of the cigar. So this is all in tandem also, that the stuff has to, has to be there. You got a rough-looking, regular guy type of cigar, and you're going to price it at $20. That's not going to work. You got an elaborate, fancy-looking cigar, and you're going to price it under $10. Maybe that doesn't work either. They have to be, it makes sense, right? Sure. Uh, in, in any type of product, including cigars. Establish a relationship with retailers, distributors, and potential international partners if you plan to export, which Rick, Rick Rodriguez did his first year out, and he went yeah. international with it and regular. <laughs> There's uh, some companies that started um, Adventura, started in Europe. And then came to the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, that's an interesting one of a guy. Yes, he was in the manufacturing business, made cigars for other people. But um, Adventura is a brand. And then they came out with it, test marketed, and did a few years in Europe before he came But comes interesting, to- if you have the relationship, Europe is easier in that you're selling to one distributor and that distributor feeds that those mm-hmm. products to the stores but they got to buy it why would they want to buy it this is where the relationship yes. comes in right it's, and his partner uh henderson ventura's partner is a retailer in europe so he knows how it works there too so actually pretty good marriage yeah and a good chance for success because they got those things going in but you're a plumber the, the guy listening to the show saying, I think I'd have my own cigar brand. Yeah, you're a plumber. You know the cigar store down the street from you, which is the place you go to, and that's it. Whew. Maybe you could make a cigar called The Plunger. The Plunger. Yeah. Or The Butt Crack. <laughs> the Butt Crack, sure. The Butt Crack. I thought that was good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see what we can do with that. Uh, so you got to establish... Those relationships, those things have to come in tandem again with those other um, moves that end up happening. Uh, and if they don't, it's going to be so, so slow. That's it. I've seen many people show up, and the launch of their product is the trade show. And here's their folding table, and here's their little uh, skirt they got on the th- thing, and there's the cigar on there, and they're waiting, and you feel so sorry for them. You go over to take a look at theirs. Oh, they're all happy to show you. Here's the cigar. and It's a dog rocket, and we're yeah. not interested. Um, <laughs> there's a reason why you say it's a relationship business. Well, when we talked before about making, um, starting a store, and we said location, 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 it's the same thing when it comes to starting. And the reason why guys like Rodriguez and Melillo and Saka, it's not that they're better at making cigars than everybody, and they're good. Yeah. It's that they have deeper relationships with more people, and that's what's making it so that they're able to be more successful. Yeah. There's uh, a little factory in the Dominican Republic, and I'm, I went to go see them last year, I think, and there was a whole bunch of young guys that were in there, uh, and boy, it brought me back to the 1990 when uh, I would go down myself, and I want to make these brands, and here I am, and I was them. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, just watching this, you don't know what you're doing. You're doing it, and you don't know what you're doing, and you're spending so much money, and you're ordering this stuff, and you, there's no p- game plan. The yeah. game plan is make it, and they'll buy it, right? Um, yeah. it, it's always a good idea to get your experience on someone else's dime. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Work for a cigar company and be a, a rep for a little yeah. while. And then do it. But we've seen it. And then the reps end up getting their brand, their brand. And those fail all the time, too. And they fail because they have no idea how the back end of that works. They know how to sell it to the store, but they right. don't know how to handle production and, um, you know, what to make the brand look like. Oh, I got a cool name. Uh, also, it's so the rep relationship with the store is a little bit fake because a lot of them, there's a lot of turnover in the industry. It's not like we've had the same rep there's very few exceptions, but it's about three years that they hold on to that job and they move on to another company. The brand already existed in the cigar store. You're going in as a glorified order taker at that point. You don't have a real relationship with the guy. You're, you're not the one that opened that store. Yeah, maybe in the case of a small store that the guy is the guy working on the floor too, it's, which is the bulk of what mm-hmm. that is. In the case of Two Guys Smoke Shop, you're dealing with a buyer you're having nothing to do with the people working the sales floor, nothing to do with the guy that owns the company either. 
the buyer's job mm-hmm. is to, to buy the cigars, right? That's that's his job, and that's who you're dealing with. And it's a mistake when that when that rep doesn't do the other things because yeah, you sold your initial order to the buyer. Now that cigar to get order number two, that cigar has to go to those stores, be sold from those stores, and reordered so that the guys on the floor have to like you. Yeah, they do have to like you. And when that's the owner, that's a good thing. There's the relationship yeah. that ends up happening. Right now, it's time for the confessional, and that's brought to you by All Saints Cigars. It's time for the confessional. Brought to you by All Saints Cigars, featuring the All Saints St. Francis. Voted the 2021 Cigar of the Year. All Saints Cigars. In the name of the Churchill, Toro, and Robusto. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And how long has it been, my son, since your last St. Francis uh, uh, <clears throat> confession? It's been one week since my last confession. And what is it that you have to confess today, my son? Oh, I want to say this guy's name so bad, but I'm not going to. No, uh, no. The following message was submitted through the contact us page of the CigarAuthority.com and Anani Moose, who put his name down. Anani Moose. He did put his name down. So this is pretty stupid, and there is absolutely no rhyme or reason for it. But last week, I was smoking a cigar that burned pretty hot. I took the cherry and burned some chest hair. Don't ask me why. I wasn't drunk. I just don't understand why I did it. There it is. I confess. (laughs) You can do that. That's fine. No, that's not fine. (laughs) Pretty sick. Why would you do that? Burning hair, too. Yeah, but burning your own chest hair with the cherry on your you cigar. You ever burn hair? Oh, it stinks. It doesn't smell good. No. But and I wonder what it tastes like. No, on the cherry, when it the, the, the hair is going to get into that ash and just be the flavor of that cigar. That's fucking gross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he's not harming anyone else. He's harming me. You can, you, uh, you I think you got to throw the You can't harm yourself it. either, you know, in the, in the eyes of God. You can't harm yourself either. Right. So, I mean, himself. is this, is this cigar. bad or it's, it's not? It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have one that says not good? This is not good. We'll go with uh, this one. Oh, for the lo- who and what? Who does that? <laughs> for your penance, smoke two Churchills, three Robustos, all Saint cigars this week. All right, and Mickey Peg will be happy about that because Mickey Peg is going to be on the show next week. And this would be a perfect show for him, but I'm afraid that he wouldn't answer the questions and said, okay, we'll, we'll at least get the answers out anyway. And yeah. we're going to bring him on, and we're going to talk about something that I don't recall. And he's a, he's a brand-new cigar manufacturer, brand owner. Yep. And um, he was in the cigar industry in many aspects of it, but I'm sure there's parts that he's surprised at that, um, you know, yeah, and, and maybe he won't share those. With he probably us next won't. Week. He probably won't. But we may ask him that, or after show it with him, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're going to talk about artificial cigar shortages. So you hear about cigar shortages, but do you know that some of them are fake? Hmm. That there is no shortage, but it's artificially done, and there's a marketing reason for it. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, the following week, November 11th, the contenders for the Cigar of the Year. We are wrapping this up, and uh, it's going to be bigger than we thought it was going to be. But um, th- there's lots of brands, but we're not 100% there, but we're 95% there. We're going to wrap it up oh, probably on Monday. I, I have some strong opinions. I know. Everybody does. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Everybody does. And, don't uh, say anything, Ed Sullivan. Uh, you'll ruin everything. We got, we got some awesome shows coming up. November 18th, Nick Perdomo and Nicholas Perdomo, the launch of Perdomo them. 30th. Yeah. And we got them coming to all the stores and coming on the show, yeah. and we're going to have the cigars. Is, is that the most anticipated cigar ever? Ever. Yeah. Ever. I mean, I can't I, think I of see anything. so much on And it'll actually be Opus here. X was a big deal back in 92 because it – they waited two more years before they put it out. Right. So was the Padron Fuente collaboration. That's, That's out to, now? It's supposed to come out oh. any day now. <laughs> any day now. Um, so another anticipated. But for a brand, a, a full line of cigars that are coming out, I can't think of anything no. more anticipated than that. Uh, it's going to be big. And uh, we'll go on from there. Uh, but Mickey Peg next week. And uh, big shows ahead. Big shows hey. ahead. 
I mean, Capellini has to be coming. Whenever the come. first snowstorm is, he'll be here. He has not called. He has not put any message out think, there that he is you coming. You think the new kid maybe is... He wants Maybe. to stay closer to home. Yeah, of course, Christmas is coming up and all that yeah. stuff. And yeah, We'll see. He we'll usually Maybe he shows up for the 10th snowstorm. All right. That's Maybe fine. we won't have any snowstorms this year. It's 80 degrees today. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you're not allowed to talk about anything because you always get it wrong. All right. So <laughs> caused COVID, for Christ's sake. Now we're talking quality control, maintaining a stringent quality control throughout the manufacturer's process to ensure consistency and excellence. Which you The talk- sample is not what you're going to get unless you're there and make sure you're going to no, get what you're going to get. No, and you talk to some brand owners, and they have to go to the factory consistently to ensure it. Otherwise, Absolutely. you're just waiting till it's done and then saying, no, I can't take those. And when you get, when you get a blend cross-section and those are, those are your sample bundles, you've got to save five or six of those. Those are not your cigars for smoking. Those are your cigars to check when you get the, the yeah. other brands in that it's the right yeah. thing. Uh, I know I didn't do it early on that was that brand owner that would just keep going to the factory and whatever. It's all different now, and all of it travels a lot of time. I just came back myself, and but you hear the manufacturers. Mm-hmm. Well, you're a brand owner. You're not a manufacturer. And why are you going to the factory? Again, that's it's, why. You're building the relationship, yeah. too. They, if they know that you're going to show up once a quarter, they're going to keep the shit together. Yeah. Uh, brand promotion, if you're going to... Um, if you want people to try your brand and you don't trust that the store is going to be pushing that product for you because typically that is not their job to push your product. Their job is carrying it, and now the product goes in. Mm-hmm. For most stores, they're not selling cigars. They offer cigars for sale. Yeah, they're looking Serve for yourself, yep. and it pulls out. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to host events. You have to be the one or somebody, you're going to have to pay somebody to do it, uh, is going to do it. So you need a, a big travel budget. That's it. And it's so hard for someone to say to Nick Perdomo, no, I'm not going to try that. It's Nick Perdomo. It's yeah. a Perdomo cigar. He's standing right there. Yeah. Dave, I know there have been a lot of brands where they decide, okay, I'm going to start regional. Right, because it's near my... Have any of those ever successfully gone national? Uh, Roja started in Texas. That's mm-hmm. all he did. He's moving out. It's been a slow ride. It's going to yeah. be a much slow, slower uh, move at that point. Um, I mean, Skip basically started as a private label mm-hmm. in, in his shop in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tatuaje was uh, a, store, uh, a cigar store exclusive, basically. Mm-hmm. That's how that started in California. Um, it's it's it's, it's, it's hard. odd. It's a it's a long road, but financially, it's it's the way to go. Um, if you don't have the budget to end yeah. up doing it, well, you just make your concentric circle bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. as you go. And then people you hear about somewhere. it, and the other one, you know, mm-hmm. you sell it to them, obviously, yeah. but you know, you're not going to be able to travel out. It, it's interesting. Uh, we, we there was talk of that some years ago of people saying um, that that's what we're going to see down the road is going to be these brands that. Uh, exists like that. That's the way it actually the was. Old days, yeah. yeah. Connecticut had their Connecticut cigars that that's what people smoked in Connecticut. California, Hoy de Monterey did not exist nationally. That was a West Coast cigar. Punch was the same cigar under there. Mm. You know, and these were regional cigars at that point. Do these things make a comeback? If you, if you follow history, usually that is, is what happens. Intellectual property, protect the brand name, the logo, the intellectual property of that trademark. As much as I told you in advance of it, you have to make sure you do your due diligence getting the brand. At that point, it's actually your job now to protect your brand. Uh, compliance with taxation, once again, now you have to make sure that that is still up and running and adapt to the changes in regulation. Keep a close eye on it. Oh, I don't care about what's happening in politics and all that stuff. Oh, you are going <laughs> to care about it. It's going to be part of uh, the DNA of you. Start the brand is more complex than you think. It requires a deep understanding of the industry and your commitment to do it. If you are not totally committed to do it. You'll be committed. Yeah. Uh, I have my own brands uh, of lots of different things over the years. We have our own brand of soda. It's pretty easy. Here's the labeling. They send us the soda, and we sell the soda. Uh, Chocolate, beef jerky, bacon jerky, just to name a few of the private label things that, that we do and have our label put on it. But when you get into a cigar, way harder. That stuff is like a piece of cake. Yeah. You had the one where you, you had the shark fin on the band. Yes. What made you decide 
uh, you know what, this isn't working. We tested it and it wasn't wowing the people like I thought it was going to do. Um, you gave it two years. You tried two different yeah. sharks. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's a great idea, and somebody maybe could execute it better than I did. Or is that one? Is that the next nub that I didn't do it properly? I didn't sink a whole bunch of money and do events and promotions and everything around it. And somebody's going to come out with a cigar with a shock fin on it someday, and you'll say, "Well, you didn't do it right." I absolutely did not do but it right. Now, in the meantime, Fuente may be upset with sharks. I was. Was I ahead of him? I think, no, I don't know. I think you may have been. Yeah. But I didn't call it shock fin. It was white. It was yeah. It was gray, gray white, and then hammerhead. Yeah, gray mm -hmm. white and hammerhead. Yeah. You go. I, you were going to go you through done, all the sharks. You had done a lot of. You had done a lot of research. You had thirty different sharks. You're like, we're good for thirty years yeah. on this. Hmm. Uh, but a cigar we, we for did, shark. Did week. it a couple times. Said it's not. It's not catching on. It's not as exciting as. Um, you, I think the the cigars were very good. They were mild. They were yeah. very good. But it was, I think there was just too much gimmick going on. You could have, could have I, had a land shark. I reached out to two big players in the industry with that and said, here's the idea. I test marketed it. Here's what's going on. Let's work together on this. And they both said, no fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> that was another thing that, because I said, I think I got something here, but I don't have um, direct, to, the, direct to the, at that time, direct to, um, the retail the retailer and said, okay, these two guys, I trust them. Let, let's see if they do it. I did it to one of them, did my whole presentation. I got turned down. I rechanged all the paperwork to the second person, just like it was day one again and tried to get them turned down. And that was the final straw. Yeah. Really. I go, okay, I trust these guys. They showed so little interest. <laughs> I, I mean, they, you could see their eyes rolling back in the, in the middle of the conversation. But how, how different would have history been if it wasn't Jose Oliva that walked in and saw the Fat Boys, if it was someone else? If George Padron walked in, for example, and saw it, Nub wouldn't have existed. No. He wouldn't it have, was he wouldn't the have been. right guy the at right the right guy. time yeah. mm -hmm. to get the inspiration. Yeah, listen, he sold his company off. They probably have no idea. This is Jay Cortez out of Europe of how, you know, where it they, came from. They bought that company because of Oliva and Nub. Mm -hmm. Those are the two things of what they bought. And look how big this Nub is still going. Uh, and, and speaking of which, it's still smoking an hour into it. I'm on my, my second one, yeah. but uh, I got plenty to go. So uh, let's go to break. And when we come back, let's look at the total cost to make your own cigar brand. And when can you stop making money? And how much money can you make? So Steve didn't get into that. How much money do you make? You, you got it successful. How much money can, can be made? Not as much as you think. <laughs> we'll see. We're live in the Toscano Soundstage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Are you a member of the Cigar Authority Care Package? Well, if not, my friend, the time is now. For just $29.99, you get four premium cigars delivered to your door each month. And we'll smoke those cigars along with you during the show. Is that really a benefit? I think it is. We will judge the construction, flavor, strength, and review the cigars, and you'll see how right or wrong we really are. You might be surprised. Four premium cigars delivered to you for just $29.99, and you can quit any time, but you won't. The value is incredible. Want to take the Cigar Authority Care Package to the next level? Sign up or upgrade to the Cigar Authority Care Package Prime. For just $5 more, you get an extra cigar and usually something special. That's five cigars each month, all different. Find the Cigar Authority Care Package on the CigarAuthority.com and sign up now. That's the Cigar Authority Care Package. Aging Room 4 Nicaragua Maestro. Named Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year with a 96 rating is a complex Nicaraguan puro carefully blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. As Cigar Aficionado described it, every puff is an overture of flavors that's at times heavy and rich with notes of dark chocolate and wood, and other times subtle and understated with hints of fine caramel and toasted almonds. Treat yourself to an aging Room 4 Nicaragua today. Surgeon General warning, tobacco smoke increases the risk of lung cancer and heart disease even in non-smokers.
You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of Cigar Science Basics, this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's Cigar Journal. Com. Hi, this is Rocky Patel, and believe it or not, I am 62 years old. Well, to celebrate my 60th birthday, we wanted to come up with something really, really special. I went and looked at some of our oldest tobaccos that we'd grown in our farms from 2014 in Esteli, Nicaragua, and we found bales of fillers. 7th and 8th priming Lijero, just wonderful, rich, rich tobaccos, a dark, oily San Andreas wrapper, a great binder from Mexico, and then fillers from Jalapa and Esteli. This cigar is called the Rocky Patel 60th, looks like a dark chocolate, and tastes like a dark chocolate. It's got layers and layers of coffee, espresso, lingering spice, uh, it is rich and decadent. You're going to try one and you're going to fall in love. This cigar got the number two cigar of the year in Cigar Aficionado. Rightly so. I hope you enjoy it. I love it. And I promise you this cigar is going to deliver everything you enjoy in a fine cigar. Some say cigars are all the same. It's just not true. It's you I have to blame. Well, I don't know, because what I know, there is a cigar called Aladino. Corojo. Aladino Corojo. Aladino Corojo. They say authentic, so we're not confused, while the others say it's a word that's just abused. I guess that's so, they can't compete, at least I'm sure Aladino can't be beat. Corojo. Aladino Corojo. Aladino Corojo. Aladino Cigars uses authentic Corojo tobacco from JRE Tobacco. This is the greatest commercial you ever heard. Yeah. This is Mickey Pegg from All Saints Cigars, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we are back, powered by the West Tampa Tobacco Company, featuring West Tampa Black, White, and Red West Tampa Cigars. It's passion with a purpose. You heard Mickey Pegg. He'll be here next week. I wonder if he is, he's coming for All Saints because uh, it's All Saints Day. And his anniversary, oh, yeah. by the way, of his brand, two years, three years? Three years. Yeah, probably uh, three. 2020, when the um, COVID thing happened. Yeah. The shit hit the fan. Yeah. So, uh, um, okay, let's let's smoke another cigar with a, with a, this one with a, a good draw. This is their other one. They well, have more than two. They have more than two. Yeah, you said the other one. Like they only well, they have, have two cigars. They have, they have Oliva have, and Nub. Oliva. Ah. Uh, well, is the uh, is Milanio called Oliva Milanio? Yes. All right. All right. So they I guess two. they only have two. There's a lot of kinds of all. Lots of kinds, lots of but kinds of nubs. Only two brands. Yeah. I, so there's one thing of going wide with your brand 
for instance, Romeo and Juliet. How many different Romeos and Juliets are there, Ooh. right? How many Olivas are there? How many mm-hmm. different Nubs are there? I tend to keep going, here's the next brand, here's the next brand, but never going wider on there. Easier to go mm-hmm. wider. Easier. Oh, and sometimes, really, they have nothing to do with the original. They just share a name. Yeah, well, and they start changing the company. So look at, you know, of um, Aging Room, for instance, and then Aging Room, Nicar- which is a Dominican brand, and then Aging Room Nicaragua, and Davidoff did it. Mm-hmm. And what, what? What? What's your problem? I got a gig I got to get to after this, so we can't go long. All right, Can go. Can I read the thing? Do it. Today's second Boy. cigar, Dave, yeah. <laughs> is the Oliva Connecticut Robusto. We're having a conversation here. Jesus. <laughs> it's a uh, traditional 5x50. It's manufactured in Nicaragua by Oliva Cigars. Its wrapper is Ecuadorian Connecticut Shade. Its binder and fillers are Nicaraguan. It is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package, and a single is eight fifty nine. And a box of 20 is one forty three ninety nine, dropping the single price down to just $7.20 on twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. I thought you were giving up this gigging. You say it. I got, this is my last one tonight. This is my last one tonight. You hear that, everybody? Well, I, I did the last wedding before. I'm not doing any more weddings. Now I decided this is it. It's just swing. And that, that what has you, what, a... What's just swing mean? That's it means I, uh, I'm throwing my own parties. I'm going to teach at the parties. I got my own equipment. Well, don't I'm do DJ your, don't do your parties at, at 2 in the afternoon on a Saturday. I won't. Okay. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. They're coming here soon. Perdomo is the brand. While all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo... Cut out the federal S-chip tax, actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. I find it amazing that Perdomo, who is on time every time, Mm -hmm. is over a year late and almost two years late for the 30th anniversary. Because that's how tough it is. And there's a guy that knows what he's doing. Yeah. And still couldn't put it out on time. It, It was the bands, right? Yeah. Those fancy bands. Yeah. Expensive fancy (laughs) things. And I know that for a fact. (laughs) Um, Okay. This is the quintessential mild cigar. Yeah, not a whole lot going on in the cold draw. We're going to light our cigar today with the Gator by Vertigo featuring a push-button ignition, a single jet fueled by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank, on the side, you've got a flip-out bullet punch. The bottom is easy adjustment, and the back is a easy C fuel window, all for the low price of nineteen ninety-nine. That is the Gator by Vertigo. The talk of Oliva is always Oliva V, mm-hmm. but this one is the money maker. I hate when people call it the five. It's not a five. Oh yeah, it's a V. It's a V. Yeah, um, but this is their this is their big seller as regular Romeo is the regular biggest seller as regular Monte Cristo, Macanudo, Ashton, you know, all these mild cigars that maybe the hardcore guy watching the cigar with yeah, says. The geeks uh, never never understand. But what this is really the, this is the money maker, man. So if you were making a brand, would you want to compete against this? I tell you not to, because very, very hard to break into that. Even I, though they're the money makers you better go niche. It's interesting. I smoke a lot of a certain brand that is not just a brand, but they're also a farmer that grows tobacco. <laughs> no, 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 it's not them. Oh. It's, it's a different one. Oh, Jonathan, how about? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it tastes like that's where they're procuring yeah. the tobacco from. That has a very distinct it could flavor be. to it. They sell a lot of tobacco. You don't want to say? I don't know. Should I say? I'd put yeah, it doesn't do. hurt. If, yeah. it's, if you're okay with it, I think it tastes Why a lot like Aganorsa tobacco. Yeah. Now let's find out if it is. That'll be your job this week. Make a couple of phone calls. Mm-hmm. Selling tobacco to Oliva. Because <laughs> oh. this is not the Oliva growing company. Correct. So there's an Oliva company that grows tobacco. It's a whole different company. Oliva Tobacco, one of the biggest in the world, but it's not Oliva the Cigar brand, mm-hmm. which is a, a different Oliva. Also big, but a different different thing. 
cost to have your own cigar brand, uh, opening a business, trademark, licenses, legal, etc. cetera, 10 grand. Um, the brand, um, small production, 1,600 bands is the lowest mm. you're going to go, maybe 20,000 bands. Um, you're going to have to do um, plating, die cutting, embossing, um, all that, another five grand on that. Now, well, that you only do once. So if the brand continues and you're going to reorder it, you're gonna they go have all they have yes. all the stuff. Um, labels on the boxes, same stuff, maybe two grand. The boxes itself, eight grand. Um, you're gonna have two hundred boxes of four sizes. They're not gonna make less than two hundred boxes. So two hundred boxes of four sizes, eight hundred boxes. Let's call them of twenty, um, because you're gonna divide that by the boxes. Uh, is sixteen thousand cigars. Um, you are now at $25,000. You haven't ordered cigars yet. Hmm. Let's say you buy cigars at $4 a piece. You're talking $80,000. You have shipping and customs and S chip, which is 41 point something cents on every cigar. You have another $8,000. You have not marketed or promoted your cigars yet. Uh, you do have sample. You have a sample. Uh, so you got to give away samples, right? Those are free. You're going to give away $4,000 worth. That's 1,000 mm -hmm. cigars maybe. You figure that in. You go to the trade show. You set up your flight, your hotel, another fifty grand. Now, this is, this is a question I have for you because you can certainly save costs by having those sample cigars in a bundle and even, yep. even without a band. The problem is... You're spending all this money on the band and the boxes, and that's marketing. Yes, you got to show and it. And no one, no one's going to be able to see it. When you're going to show them a picture, right? So you're going to, you're actually, you're actually spending a little bit extra, yeah, to get boxes on your initial order. Yeah, once you got the the brand is already popular, you don't have to come in with the Romeo and Juliet box and present me with a Romeo and Juliet. You can pull it out of a bundle; it doesn't matter. But you're starting a brand off. You're going to want to open the box in front of the buyer. Yep. And Go through the whole dog and pony show. $167,000 so far, you have 16,000 cigars. Here's the other problem. Everything runs behind. So the, the ones you bring to the trade show probably aren't ready to smoke yet. Right. <laughs> Unless you go wait in advance yeah. of it. $167,000, you have 16,000 cigars. Do you have a rep, somebody to sell it? If you do, he's going to want at least 10% of the wholesale price that you sell it for. Uh, you want to do it yourself? That means you've got to do all the work yourself, which means big travel expenses. And we're going low here at $33,000 um, travel expenses to round it up to $200,000, and you have 16,000 cigars. Do the div Divide that by 200000 by the 16,000 cigars. Your cost is $12.50 per cigar. Your cost. <laughs> now you're going to sell that cigar to the store at a profit. What are you going to sell that cigar for? Wholesale to the store. If you only sell it to them for thirteen fifty a piece, you made one. Th you made sixteen hundred sixteen thousand dollars, <laughs> and that's what you're going to make for the year. It's not enough. So you got to go up and up and up from there at that point, and then they're good. That's going to determine the selling price of the cigar. And now you're over twenty dollars per cigar. How good is that cigar at twenty dollars? This is me and you messing around yeah. this week on something, and then we said, "Oh my God, we can't get that much for that cigar." Yeah. Yeah. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Uh, believe me, somebody's doing it right now. Somebody who's trying to get this brand is at that point. Uh, you want the company and plan to work your ass off. You want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year, and those are the cigars you're going to sell for the year. Oh my God, where are you going to be with with this product? Sixteen thousand cigars. 1,000 was sampled out. It leaves you 15,000 cigars. Uh, your cost was 12.50 per cigar. You need $100,000 profit. You divide that by the $15,000 cigar. You need to upcharge $6.67 onto your $12.50. <laughs> so now you're at $19.17 wholesale for that cigar. It it gets worse and worse and worse as I dig into this, and. This is not a good time, but as I started with this, there's never a good time to get into it, but understand that, and if I just told you something that you never even considered, 
don't do it. Don't do it uh, because you actually didn't do your homework. You're considering coming out with a brand. I've seen so many people, good people, hardworking, good people, come out with a product and they have no chance. There's no chance for it to be possibly successful. Uh, and then there's even people that have smart, they're smart, they have money, and they get in and they can burn through money. Yeah, you don't want to be at the point where you're making the rounds and crying in somebody's office. Yeah. You were there for that, too. <laughs> and whatever happened to that guy? Don't know. And I bought uh, it. Yeah, he got one, he got one more order. <laughs> we, were you there through the whole thing, or you, you had left? No, I think I was working in the studio, oh, really? so I, I didn't witness oh, the all right. crying. He, yeah, he cried and went to the bathroom, and yeah. he came back, and I had to do the right thing and buy his cigars. But I don't would, understand why that's the right thing. I don't know. Because he cried? And I'm not even the buyer. And then I had to call Ed, and Ed yelled at me because he's the buyer <laughs> and said, this is my job. And what am I going to do? He cried. And, and it fucks everything up, the bonuses and everything that everybody gets because I bought bad product that I end up doing. But he had no shot. I never heard from it ever again. I bought him. I don't think I bought him a second time. I may, I may have. I don't know. But there was no chance because it was just way overpriced. And this was a guy that knew the cigar industry but not the back end, not understood this part of it. So sad. But anyway, let's get to the stars review this year. Can we week. ask the Don real quick? Okay, let's ask the Don from Don Raphael Cigars. It's time to ask the Don. Mm. Brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. Don Rafael cigars are premium cigars. Mm. Mellow and smooth. Built for every man's everyday enjoyment. Don Rafael cigars. Now, here is the question of the week. And the following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. And Ray writes, uh, Good morning, Don. I have a question. At present, I have approximately 200 cigars spread out amongst a number of Tupper doors. I desperately want to get them out of the Tupper doors and into something more stylish. Unfortunately, we are in the midst of building our house and I have no time to build or funds to buy a proper humidor. I do have some Spanish cedar earmarked to line any new humidor I build. Next month, my wife and former sweetheart will be away for a week and a bit. I was thinking this might be a great opportunity to deviate from my honeydew list and build myself a humidor. Because of the limited time I have, I won't be able to build a nice humidor that I hope to. That will come later. Now, I do have a wooden chest that I made about 20 years ago. This chest would easily fit two or 300 cigars once lined, racked, and seasoned with the Spanish cedar. And here's the ball buster. The wood chest I want to use is made with beautiful red aromatic aromatic yeah. cedar absolutely not my question is using the idea of fluid humidity shifts <laughs> similar to the principle of osmotic pressure and remembering that outer cedar chest lined with the spanish cedar will the oils and the aroma from this outer box still migrate to the cigars yes even if inside the inside humidity is higher than the outside yeah don't do it um i did a little research on uh, american red cedar it holds less humidity for starters and has way more aroma than Spanish cedar. It's poisonous. How about that? How about, let's go with it's poisonous. Technically speaking, all cedar is poisonous. Huh. Um, the, it, so are lectins. What's yeah. your point? Yeah. It's you not, can end this. You can move along. It's not the a good idea. The answer is absolutely not. It's not a good idea. All right. What do you got for this, the, the review? All right. This one... And I know Chef is a big fan of this cigar. This is the Big Sky Blackfoot. Oh, small little company, yeah. moving along, chugging along. Right. And this one got a very good review. We we're going to come right out with the 90.7. All right. Now the, Again, nobody knows what it is, but it is a really good cigar. The interesting thing about this is the strength score. Is probably the highest strength score we've tallied so far, 7.2. It is, absolutely. And 
Listen, it's got a, lo a ton of flavor, lots of flavor notes. People are getting some charred cedar, some leather, and it's a, a complex cigar. It changes profile through the whole cigar. Yeah. So uh, people were very positive on this one. Very good. Very good. So far, they got to see it's all good cigars that, that are coming out. That's what we're trying yeah. to do, but we just don't want you to know what they are before they come in, and uh, maybe we'll, Smoke we'll start... Smoke them and tell us. Maybe we'll start throwing some law balls in there and something that people don't think is good, and you don't know what you're going to get till you get it, and we, we do the review. Two guys, um, the CigarAuthority.com, the CigarAuthority.com. Yep. When every, you're a boner, life is Thursday. like a box of chocolates. It's not a boner at all. It's not... Um, Okay, we got to get to the Fave Five, so let's do that. And the who, Fave Five. Who's that brought to you by? Uh, who is it brought to you by? McCallum. McCallum Cigars. <laughs> it's time for the McCallum Fave Five, brought to you by McCallum Cigars. Smoke five McCallum Cigars and be entered to win $300 in gift certificates weekly. That's five $50 gift certificates and an additional five $10 gift certificates for your friends. In December, all winners will be put back and entered to win the grand prize. A trip for two to next year's McAuliffe Open House in Texas. Simply go to McAuliffeCigars.com slash TCA for more information. That's McAuliffeCigars.com slash TCA. Okay, top five answers on the board. Name something associated with vampires. Jonathan always hits it first. Mm -hmm. Something associated with vampires. Go. Fangs. Fangs, he says. Fangs is not on the list. That's bullshit. Not on the list. And That's I actually, the number one thing associated with vampires is but, fangs. Not according to these people. Let's just go with blood. Blood is number two. Blood is number two. You can steal it now, Mr. Jonathan. Um, the night. Twilight is the night. Yes. Number one. So we have yeah, number but one. It didn't really mean Twilight as the night. It meant it as the series. What's the series? A whole bunch of movies. You never heard of that? No. Uh, never mind. So my answer stands. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you Dave's win. ignorance <laughs> saves me yet again. All right. You know what that is? Of course I know what it is. Yeah. Twilight was number one. Number two was Blood or Blood Sucker. Number three was Garlic. Number four was Bat. I now, I now know who his panel is. Yeah? I know who his panel is. Uh -huh. And number five. He is doing this legit. He is polling people. Yes, yeah. I am. And number five is Cape. Why would... They wear oh. capes. Oh, they wear capes. Not Cape Cod. Do a lot of show prep <laughs> on oh, I, I was thinking Cape Cod, and I'm like, there was a movie about the Cape or something, but... There were, weren't there vampires in Santa Cruz? I picture him banging on the ceiling with a broom handle, mm -hmm. screaming, Ma, do you have your hearing aids in? And if she responds, he says, give me five things you think of with a vampire. That's not true. All right, it is polled. Okay, uh, early <laughs> thoughts on Oliva, Connecticut. This is the Reserve Robusto. Very mild. Very it's mild, mild, but pleasant. Yeah, burns good, tastes good. Solid yeah, draw. If somebody's giving me one, I'm happy about it. And they sell shitloads of these. Mm. This is a big, big seller right here. Maybe a one and a half or two <laughs> out of ten strength wise. Yeah. Uh, all right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we got mail to get to, three of them, a prize to give away, and lots more. We're live in the Toscano soundstage. You are listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Introducing Blackened Cigars, M81 by Drew Estate. A dark, bold, and unapologetic cigar collaboration. My job is all about taste. So when James mentioned he wanted to create an exclusive cigar, I was stoked. Like Metallica, Drew Estate has some of the most hardcore fans out there. I've known Rob Dietrich for years. And when he approached me to collaborate on this, we couldn't be more excited. I mean Metallica, Black and & Whiskey, and Drew Estate what could be a better passion project? We all came up with the vision of what a blackened M81 cigar would look and taste like. M81 Metallica formed in 1981, as you can see right here, just so I don't forget. <laughs> and now you won't forget because it's on this. We needed to craft a cigar unlike anything in our portfolio. 
One that would take cigar fans on the deepest, darkest, heaviest journey into the mystical world of Maduro. Full bodied with notes of espresso, leather, and dark chocolate. A wrapper, a binder, a filler that is all Maduro, and they are all grown in separate places. You talk about a heavy leaf cigar, this is beyond passion. This shit is straight amplification. Black & Cigar M81 by Drew Estate is bold, rich, and powerful enough to satisfy the most experienced cigar connoisseur, but also balanced that new cigar lovers can enjoy its tantalizing smoking experience as well. Black & Cigars M81 by Drew Estate. Since 1989, Nestor and Mariana Miranda have subscribed to one family, one vision with Miami Cigar & Company. Since their inception, the Miranda family has fulfilled their dream by creating some of the best cigars on the market today. Cigars like Nestor Miranda Special Selection, which is produced in Nicaragua, featuring an oily Nicaraguan Habano wrapper that the Cigar Authority named their 2019 Cigar of the Year. And the Don Lino Africa, which celebrates Nestor's love of big game animals. These soft box-pressed cigars feature an authentic Cameroon binder, which creates delicious nuances and crescendos. Miami Cigar invites you to try these brands at your favorite tobacconist. You only have one life. How will you live yours? Experience the rich tradition of the legendary H. Upman brand with the latest addition to their iconic 1844 line. The H. Upman 1844 Añejo uses a rich, well-balanced blend of Nicaraguan, Honduran, and Dominican tobaccos and an extra-aged wrapper that offers a deep aroma with a bold finish. The H. Upman 1844 Añejo is sure to please adult smokers looking for a delicious, handmade, premium smoke that is aged to perfection. Surgeon General warning, tobacco use increases the risk of infertility, stillbirth, and low birth weight. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donuts. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. This is Christian Eiroa from CLE, Asylum, and Eiroa. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we're back, powered by West Tampa Tobacco Company, featuring West Tampa Black, White, and Red. It's West Tampa Cigars, passion with a purpose. Okay, we got a prize to give away. I think we should talk to each other like we do in the Jose Dominguez commercial. Yeah. All the time. All right, would you like to end up... Uh, doing the prize for today i would love to do the prize dave <laughs> yeah. uh this week's prize uh is being offered up by the fine folks at h up and cigars and the prize contains a bottle of day trader perrier a oh. credit card wallet a bracelet and an h upman coin huh and may or may not include that cigar uh, no that cigar's on uh, an insert card, yeah, a, I think. It's a printout. Oh, okay. Looks like it's real, but okay. No, it's fake. You All look right. like you're real. And yeah? Look at where we are. 
Oh, so a card with a picture of a cigar on it. Yes. Yeah, you get that. Uh, the following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. And Vincenzo writes. Vincenzo. Thank you for reading. Two months ago, I was able to smoke the cigar. I was unable to smoke the cigar provided in the care package with you all for the most baffling of reasons. Upon cutting the cigar, sponsored by Perdomo, I came across immense resistance. Pulling the cap off revealed a walnut that Get somehow got here. rolled into the cigar. Pulling the walnut out ruined the cigar, <laughs> but frankly, I didn't care. I was so perplexed at the situation. I'm sorry I didn't think to send the cigar A walnut in. shell? It couldn't be a whole walnut, right? I'm sure Mr. Jonathan would have loved an extra nut in his mouth. Uh, huh. yeah. Never heard of such a thing. I know they use walnut shells. Um, like they... Put, they grow things in walnut shells, not t tobacco, but mm. like um, leafy vegetables and stuff with yeah. the water and the hydroponics. Yeah, hydroponics. Or something. Maybe someone just had a snack and they because people have had walnut huh. shells in their lettuce and things like that. A happen. walnut. Never just heard of it. Rolled into the tobacco. So How's the that possible? Press. You know, the roller gotta, was eating walnuts. They got a bowl of, of walnuts. They pick up a thing. They put it in their mouth. They drop one on the thing. It goes into the Lieberman press. They don't see it, and boom, walnuts in the. Huh. I don't see how that's even possible, but I believe you. It's never happened to me. I it's such an odd thing to have made no, up if he made no. it up. So I think it's real. Walnut. Did, and he didn't say what brand it was or anything? He did not. Because I could tell the manufacturer, hey. You got walnuts? Yeah, you stop eating nuts while you're making cigars. Uh, Paul writes, with respect to the Boner Star Cigar Reviews. He didn't say Boner. I added that. All right. Then All don't. Right. Then don't. Because uh, that's not what he... Don't add... Uh, content in to make the things seem worse than they are. Yeah. Because we're, this is a contest here. Let's talk about the Stars Cigar Reviews. Okay. We've done 12 cigars. The prices have ranged from 8 to $51. The scores have ranged from 88 to 90.8. Wow. No he's cigar this? has gotten above 90.8. What does this tell us? Is there a problem with the Stars Reviewers? Or since these are all mostly new release cigars, can we say there's an issue with cigars coming out? Why, the, 90 isn't good? To the average consumer, is it the band that we're mostly tasting, mm. and when blinded, it just tastes like a cigar? We have to test the system. Mm. Send us a universally good cigar, a Padron 1964. That, that one's not a good one because you can tell what it is by looking right. at it. Uh, send us a cigar that you've had in the humidor for a while that came out a while ago. Yeah, we're only uh, three cigars in here. To see we're what the have, reviewers think. A year think. later, we're going to have some data. Go ahead, go. To see what the reviewers think of an older cigar, let's shake things up and try to get to a 95 plus. Rating. You get all pouty when somebody talks while you're talking. I, I get one sentence left. You could, you could hold it. I can't like hold it. Like you're a camel when gone. it comes to taking I was, a leak. I, I get up three times today, today I was holding a thought when, and Ed interrupted me and I never got the thought never back. Got it you back. got a pencil, put it on your paper. There we go. Yeah, I. I think to a point, with the new reviewers, you tend to be conservative, right? Because you got nowhere to go if you start too high. That's true. That's high. Yeah. 90, listen, they have a criteria there. He sees what it ends up yeah. saying, that it, it's an excellent cigar. 90 says excellent. If I'm giving something a 90, it is excellent. Right. I don't throw around higher than 90s. No. 80s are good. 80s yeah. are good. So you're saying this cigar is... Everything has been so far 89 to 91 or whatever right. number it, you said. 88 to 90.8. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, everything has been excellent, by the way. I haven't thrown a, I haven't a, thrown any a, a loser in there. Yeah. Right. I'm throwing all great stuff in right now. Well, the I, other there will the be. There, there is going to be these other things that are going to show up because I want to see what happens. Right. But nothing is so bad you don't sell it. Correct. So, so everything good. is going to be good. Following message was also submitted through the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com, and Matthew writes with respect to a disturbing trend. Ooh. Dear Dave, Mr. J, and Ed, over my eight plus years of listening to I your excellent one, podcast, because he mentioned me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I have noticed something disturbing. See if you catch on. I was born February third, nineteen seventy-eight. Ah, I was born, by the way, uh, short shortly before that. I graduated 31st, high school then. 31st of, <laughs> of January. Uh, I started school a year later than most kids. This guy's still creeping me out a little bit here. Why? 
I started a year later than most ah, kids. Huh. I was home educated for part of my schooling oh, and went to goodness. public school for the rest. You, uh, he doesn't is, have the lectin thing, does he? Hang on. <laughs> yeah. My parents were part of a small startup church. Oh, boy. I like my sparkling water plain and my coffee black. I have a stainless steel water bottle. I'm always cold. A couple of years ago, I purchased a pair of flannel lined jeans. He wears five I coats two, on. It's 80 degrees today. I have two pairs this of flannel This is a brother from another mother here, okay? I'm very careful about my diet and fast twice a week, rookie. You'll, you'll, you'll kick that up a notch. I have a three year old Aladino Corojo reserve in the Robusto resting in my humidor. Wow. And finally, I have never seen, nor do I have plans to ever see, the Godfather. Mr. J, are we twins? Wow. More than likely, just disturbed. Signed, Matt. Poor bastard deserves the prize. Wow. Yeah. We. Yeah, and he acknowledged me, so he's got yeah. my vote. All right. Matthew gets the prize. Maybe he's going to visit someday and uh, you guys can hang out or totally avoid each other. No, no, we'll end up hanging out and then we'll hang out in your office and just drive you up the wall with all of our I can't talk. Have, I can't have two of you. There's no way. <laughs> it's time to take a peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. It's time for news from the insane asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true. Or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4 inches by 44 to the absolutely insane 8 inch by 80. Asylum cigars. <laughs> <laughs> While there is no factual account of Albert Einstein and Marilyn Monroe having a romantic relationship, there was an iconic and playful interaction between the two in 1954. At a press conference for the opening of New York City's Madison Square Garden, Monroe known for her beauty and wit, posed a question to Einstein, the renowned physicist. She asked him, what do you think the world's greatest problem is? In response, Einstein humorously quipped, the only problem we have is the gravitational pull between me and you. Whoa. Monroe replied, our child could have my looks and your intelligence, to which Einstein replied, oh no, they should have my looks and your intelligence. This charming exchange captured the imagination of the public and remains part of their enduring legacy. Later tests would also show that Monroe had an IQ of 165, while the father of theory, the father of the theory of relativity, only scored 160. Great job, Norma Jean. I wouldn't have sex with that dumbass either. And that's not only insane; that's asylum. Hmm. How could those two have a conversation with each other? <laughs> well, she was smarter than he was. I don't know. Huh. I've never heard of this before. That she had a high IQ. Do you think he just made it up? It's possible. Well, and this sounds like speculation after she died. Right, right. What's the proof of this? There's no proof. And how did they, they didn't text each other. How, how did this conversation? They, they were talking the same place. at a press conference. Oh, really? Back yeah. when you used to do big openings like this, you'd have a press conference and famous people oh. would sit up on Madison the microphone. God, no it grand big. opening. It's, it's possible. Big. It's possible. All right. Uh, speaking of big, there was a big movie premiere that happened this week. Uh, and I checked with Ed when I saw him on Monday, and we both did the same thing on Sunday because Sunday was the premiere of the movie. We both caught it because I'm going to go as far as to say our friend Bill. Yeah, our friend Bill had a movie. Had a movie, Bill Burr. He wrote it, directed it, produced it, starred in it, yada, yada, yada. What Old platform is it on? Netflix. Uh, was it Netflix? Mm -hmm. I don't have Netflix. Okay. Uh, you can go over Ed's house and watch it. Yeah. Well, Dave has. <laughs> it's closer. Why don't, you, why don't one of you just make me a profile on yours, and I'll just load it up on my TV. Old dads. Uh, at the beginning of this movie, it, I loved it because I said, this guy is me. He's yelling at this kid on a scooter, get away from me, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, this is going to be good. That the, you know, And he's bashing these people of the problems they had. And I said, this guy's good. But as it turns out... He was the joke of the movie. Again, he wrote the movie, too. Mm -hmm. But he was almost like, you know, when you first saw uh, Archie Bunker in All in the Family, you're with him at the beginning. And then you say, oh, my God, this guy is a racist and he's, you know, a bad guy. This, yeah. is, this is how I took that movie. Right. Yeah, he had to go to anger management. Yeah. And 
Dave was on his side. I was on his side all the way through. Dave definitely needs to go to anger management. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is he making fun of of himself because he seems like that type of person? He's an angry person. Yeah. And then he wrote a movie where he says, I got a problem here. Yeah. And he talks about his anger all the time. Negatively. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Because I don't. I have this anger problem, but I I talk positively about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's correct. So <laughs> the problem is the that I have problem. the same anger, and I and I think you're correct most of the time. Well, you have learned to become me. You and Dan have learned to become me, of the anger of other pe- you know other people not doing what they're supposed to do. I always had the anger. Now I say it out loud. Yes. It's just uh, don't you feel I'll like explode. you'll explode? Yes, I'll explode exactly a hundred percent. You'll explode <laughs> if you if you don't do it. And and understand that about me that if I I do it because I'm worried about my own health. If I don't let it out, it's going to be gone. I'm going to move along because Jonathan wants to get out of here early because you got things to do. But More it's the last time. Thing. It's the last time, so we're going to give him the thing pass on it till the next time. And then I'll mention to him, you said last time that this was it. And he'll say, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. So yeah. I'm going to mock well, today think, down. Yeah, you're thinking it's just because it's on tape that yes. you got me. I got you. All right. Because huh. this is it, right? This is it. I'm retired Dave, after tonight. Bingo McTavish says that's a lot to unpack psychologically. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, and we, we talked about. But you're about, self-aware. That's I am. good. I, I know that, that people have a problem with this, but I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with it. Which is a problem, right? Which may be the problem. The, I think the, the problem is that you've got a couple of people around you that can handle it, and so you don't get the negative feedback that the average person gets. I get negative, negative feedback. I have, we all hear it from our wives. It's, that's par for the course. Yeah. I think I'm a good person. You and, are a good and person. I, and, I, and I don't mean bad. I mean exactly what I say. When I realized that was the case, yeah. I started getting along much better. All right. Right time. Right now, it's time for the Classic 3-Way, and it's brought to you by Classic Cigars. It's time for This Day in Classic History. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Classic Cigars are now the most affordable cigar brand in America. Priced as low as $2.99 for the Corona, and still under 4 bucks for the 6x60. Classic Cigar has something for everyone. The Classic Connecticut is light and smooth. Light. The Classic Maduro is bold, but never overpowering. Classic Cameroon sits somewhere in between with hints of sweetness. And the Classic Cuban is a real knockoff of flavors of old-time Havanas. Classic Cigars are sold in cost-saving bundles of 20 and sold in five great sizes. Classic Cigars. The most affordable, premium, handmade cigar in America. 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 Classic cigars. All right. Ed Sullivan is the champion, he I is. believe. Yeah. October 28th is today, 2023. Happy birthday to Bill Gates. Bill Gates, entrepreneur, co-founder of Microsoft, grew to become one of the most successful companies in history. Forbes ranks him as the wealthiest person in the world. Bill Gates... What year was he born? McRib says, I can't quit this commercial. <laughs> uh, 1957. 57. Uh, I got 1938. 38 for the point. It's 55, but he gets a point. I was you, closer, though. Yes. Yeah, you were. You, see you know what you should works. do is you need to be angry, yeah. and you need to get the rules changed. Jonathan, I don't care about anything. Ed Sullivan to get angry. doesn't have anger. I've never seen it. No. It must happen. I have disappointment. Oh. Yeah. yeah. He has anger. But you don't get angry. No, he has anger. Yeah. Sometimes. You, have, you hold it in. You got to let it out. He really? lets it out in sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, happy birthday to Caitlyn Jenner, reality star, formerly known as Bruce Jenner. Uh, I was going to uh, ask. All right. I didn't know which one it was. She was related to Bruce. Okay. She earned uh, Olympic gold. She earned an elite. Olympic gold medal. I don't know how to say that, but uh, in the Summer Olympics in Montreal. No, I guess he did. But then she gained fame on the most popular TV reality show of all time. Nope, that was he also, Mm -hmm. keeping up with the Kardashians. And then she is having a birthday today. All right, 1944. 44. 1950. It's 49. He gets another point. Fucking right. I could have said, really, her birthday, she's only like five years old or something, <laughs> right? But I didn't. I think I didn't. closer to 12, huh. but. 
Has it been that long? It's been a while. Okay. Uh, I have four questions. I'm, no I'm doing breakers. well. I'm just losing. You, that's right. You, right. You're very close, <laughs> but not close enough. But no cigar? Back to you. Happy birthday to Julia Roberts. Movie actress gained fame starring in Pretty Woman and went on to win an Oscar for leading roles in Aaron Brockovich. Mm. Julia Roberts, born today. What year was that? 1964. 64. 58. 58. Ed Sullivan will take it because he thought it was higher, but he went lower because now you're learning to catch on. 67. Uh huh. 67. So Ed's got one point. Jonathan has two points. I have one question left. Any tiebreakers? No there tie are no tiebreakers. Tie so I could still win, though. You, you get two yeah. points. Yeah. Or you just get one point and, and you still I win. still win. Right. All right. Because you're the winner. I like it. Uh, this is over to uh, Jonathan. Jod Karim. K-A-R-I-M. Jod. J-A-W-E-D. Karim. He's an entrepreneur, co-founder of YouTube, became the first ever person to upload a video on the popular video sharing platform, YouTube. He uploaded the first video clip on YouTube, uh. Me at the Zoo, on April 23rd, 2005. It was the first YouTube video ever. He's the guy that did it. You don't know him, but mm -hmm. he's the first one. 1981. 81. 1966. 79, you get the point. See how that works? Ed is the champion. But I was closer. Yes. This is bullshit. <laughs> Change that rule. You've been saying that for 14 years. This is the longest running segment ever. This it's has been there since episode uh, one. Well, I don't know about longest running segment because it wasn't a segment. It was filler at the start. It still is. Um, I do have one email I want to get to. It's not in contention. It just really is. Uh, you know, we're changing. Public. January 1st, we're changing a shitload of commercials on all shows. So uh, the question is, should this segment stay here? Should it not? I don't know. The following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com. And uh, Lauren writes, Greetings all. Love the show and all I learn. I recently found a cigar in my collection that after I removed it from the cello to smoke had been ravaged by our nemesis, the wow. Cigar Beetle. Ugh. I was heartbroken and instantly thought of my collection being at stake and I reached out to a Cigar Authority for advice. I checked my collection and found it had not exited from the cello nor was any other cigar in the vicinity uh, had any damage. Maybe a short mention on this on your great show could inform others like me of what to do. Thanks, Mr. J, and his advice that calmed me down all was not lost. And my, for my question to him, he sent me pictures, and they, at first it just looked like the cigar had been dropped. It was a, a bad angle, and he retook the picture, and you could see that it had eaten up the side of the wrapper and also into the head. And I said, simply check that cellophane because if there's holes in the cellophane, he got out. Yes. And is now somewhere else. If there's no hole in the cellophane, then it, there's a very good chance that it's just stuck inside there. Now take the cigar apart and find him. I didn't think of that. Ah. This is why, that's why I'm here. This is why you're so here. So that I, I've gone through this with somebody else in the past that brought this to me. The same exact scenario ended up happening. Take it, remove it from the humidor, get the humidor away. Now we're going to dissect the cigar. And there he was. And I said, look how lucky you are because here it is. And that's where he stayed. That was the only cigar he touched unless he came from somewhere else. But there wasn't a hole in the cellophane. So how could he get in there? This is it. And you got yeah. lucky that he died while he was in there. For sure. Mm -hmm. I never got one that was alive. No, I don't know if I've ever seen that, okay. you know what? You know what kills them? It's the lectins in the tobacco. No. Oh, I they, thought, that's, I, what they, that's how they live. I thought it was Yoko Ono. No. Because you eat, you have a cigar in your mouth all the time. You got lectins in your mouth no, all the, all the time. No, uh, the combusted end burns the lectins off. Yeah, but it's not what you have in your mouth. Yeah, you need to stick the lid. Well, in I'm not in digesting your mouth. it. It has to go through your digestive tract. Yeah, and then it goes the on your lips, and it's getting going in the osmosis or something. <laughs> Some reverse osmosis thing. By osmosis. Yeah. No. Say good night, Dave. Say good night. All right, we're gonna we're gonna leave uh, five minutes early. Thank you. And Appreciate that's that. just for you. And, 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 and for you, everybody in the audience has lost five minutes of this entertaining shit. Because it's the last time. But it's the last it's time, the last so time. we're celebrating. So I, mean, I was nervous about going to this gig. Because I always want to do really well, and then I realized it doesn't matter. That's right. They can't hire me next year. No. Nope. I'm going in very relaxed. 
but you're going to try to do a good job of anyway. Of course. I killed it last night. Yep, I heard that. I heard you, you banged your head. You, you didn't kill yourself, but concussed. You concussed it. All right, next week, uh, people are talking about AI, but we're going to talk about AS. AS, artificial shortage. Ad- artificial cigar not shortages. artificial semination. No, it isn't. It's artificial cigar <laughs> shortage. Is it real? I was or- trying to figure out a way to work that in, and you got, you got it before me. Well Is done. it real or a marketing ploy or just a little bit of both with us? Mickey Pegg from All Saints Cigars. Who may or may not Ma- weigh in. He, and McAuliffe Cigars. So yeah. he hasn't been here since now. He's playing a dual role. Mm-hmm. We'll see how that, that has changed Mickey. Double Looking agent. For- yeah. Until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And it's quite possible that you learned something today which makes you The Cigar Authority. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.